Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus Christ. There is none other in heaven or on earth. Welcome to another episode of Hope in Christ with Denise. Here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast, where we place our hope in the only hope there is. Christ our Lord. Welcome, 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 welcome back to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. I'm your host, Pastor Denise, and I welcome you back to today's show. We are going to be talking about abiding in Christ, abiding in the Lord, the true and living God. Before we begin with our devotional for this week, let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, we bless your holy name, for you are the living one. You are the true and living God. You are the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Father, I thank you, and I magnify your name. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise, Lord. I thank you, and, Lord, I pray for those that are listening. God, I pray, oh, God, that we would love you with, an ever, with everything that's in us. Father, you loved us, love us with an everlasting love, and I pray that every fiber of our being, we would love you. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory and give you honor and give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Again, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus Christ. There is none other in heaven or on earth. Welcome to another episode of Hope in Christ with Denise. Here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast, where we place our hope in the only hope there is, Christ our Lord. Welcome, 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 welcome back to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. I am your host, Pastor Denise, and I welcome you back to today's show. We will be discussing abiding in Christ, abiding in the living and true and living God. Let us open with a word of prayer, and then we'll begin today's show. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you for who you are. We pray, O oh God, for those that are listening. We pray for provision. We pray for your will to be done in our lives, God. We pray, O oh God, that we will come unto you, O oh God, and that we would abide. We will remain. We will stay and find that rest, that hope, that truth, because it's only found in you. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Again, thank you all for tuning in to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Enforcers Broadcast. Again, I'm your host, Pastor Denise. I am the founder of Hope in Christ Ministries. And at Hope in Christ, we are healthy overcomers, purpose, with an eternal perspective as we stand on the hope that there is no other hope which is found in Christ Jesus. And we find our true identity in him, for he is alone, the living one. And so I thank you all for tuning in again. And we are going to be talking about abiding in Christ, abiding in Christ. What does it look like and why is it so very vitally important? And so today we're going to come from John 15, chapters, chapter 15, verses 4 and 5. So we're in John 15, verses 4 and 5. And, of course, we are very familiar with this scripture, but we're going to break it down because here at Hope in Christ we're also um, focusing on biblical literacy. So our mottos are hope, healing, and literacy building. And so we're going to begin 
by talking about John 15, verses 4 and 5, and we're going to talk about abiding and what it looks like and why it's so important. Amen? So John 4, 15, verses 4 and 5 says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. And so, again, it says, abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. So this here, we're talking about biblical literacy. This scripture particularly is a metaphor. It's metaphorically, Jesus is speaking metaphorically of where they are. And a lot of times on the show, you'll hear me talk about that Jesus comes from a place of their understanding. What would they connect with to get them to understand who he is? And so in this particular scripture, he gets them to understand from the place of the the vine, the grapevine. And so he knows that they are in that agricultural time where they deal with um, those that are vine, uh, you know, they have the vine, the grapevines, and the different things, and the farming and all of that. And that they have the um, those that are vine dressers and things like that. So he knows that when he speaks that language that they would understand. He knew at a particular time that they would understand. And then he goes on to continue with the metaphor that he's using to speak metaphorically. He begins to say in verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. And so he begins to, you know, if you really pay attention to what he's saying, if he, he begins to explain that just like, a grapevine, and that the, the the vine being the source, the main portion or the main part, and then the branches are a part of the vine itself, then he's getting them to understand because they can relate to a grapevine. And so that's what this scripture is um, referencing. And so here, again, at Hope in Christ, we deal with biblical literacy, and we simply break it down so that we all can understand. Because oftentimes when we are reading adults and reading scriptures, we seem to think that, you know, it don't take all of that for you to help me understand. Don't talk to me like I don't get it. But when we really break down the words, it gives us a greater revelation. So we have to go and we dig into words that we may not necessarily have looked at at first. And so we go and look at the original Hebrew or the original Greek, and we really dig into the meaning of these particular words. Amen? So we're going to talk about these particular words that we just read in the scripture. So we have, again, abide in me. And I in you, as the branch, cannot bear fruit of itself. So here the we are, the people, the individuals, the believers, are the branches, right? We are the branches. As the branch cannot bear fruit, bear, bring forth fruit in itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, he can do or you can do nothing. And so I I emphasized when I was reading because there are a couple words that kind of kept being repeated. The one word that was repeated the most is abide. And so when you read the word, when you read scripture, it is very important that you pay attention to the fact that there are words that repeat themselves. And most of the time when the word is repeating, that is the theme of that particular verse of that scripture. When we teach kids reading comprehension, we teach them to pay attention to things that stand out in the in the um passage of whatever they're reading. Well, why can't we do the same with ourselves and with kids when reading scripture? Teach them how to 
point out the word that jumps off the page. The word that jumps off the page, the word that is constantly repeated is abide. And so in the Strong's Concordance um, reference, it says that abide is, of course, a verb. Now, keep that in mind. We're going to talk about verbs. We're going to talk about verbs. And so abide is a verb, and it means to stay, continue, dwell, endure, remain, or not depart. Let me say that again. To stay, continue, dwell, endure, remain, or not depart. Then there was another word that it didn't necessarily repeat, but it's very vital, it's very important to that particular verse. So the word that also needs to be looked at deeper is the word branch, and that's us. And so a branch is vine sprout, tender, and limb. So it is something that cannot do anything in and of itself. So keep that in mind as we are talking about the word here. Another word that wasn't necessarily repeat, repeated over and over, it was repeated, there was, it was in the um, verses twice, the word fruit, but we have to understand going and looking up fruit because we know it's not literal fruit, but we still have to pay attention and go then. That's another way to go and study what the Bible says about fruit. Amen? And so fruit is that which originates or comes from something an effect or a result. And that which originates or comes from something, an effect or a result. So the effect of abiding or remaining, we bear good things. We bear the things that God desires for us to bear in our lives. We It is originated from God when we are abiding there. Amen? And then, of course, our other words. So you see here, that it may sound like, whoa, we got to look up all of those words, but it is so amazing to see what God is really saying when we stop a minute, and if it's just two verses like we have right here, and stop a minute and just dig into that word, and it will give us so much revelation of who God is and what he desires and what he is calling for in our lives. Amen? And so the last word that I looked up and I want you to pay close attention to is vine. Um, because Jesus said, I am the vine. He didn't say, I am a vine. Pay attention to that, the article that's used. Article, he uses the, not a. It's a difference. If you say, I am a vine, that means that there's some other choices or there's some other vines out there. But he says, I am the vine, which means there is no other vine that can, where you ha can abide in or remain in, because remember, in, in the natural sense, in the physical sense, there are several vines. But Jesus said in this verse here that I am the vine. So we have to be very, very mindful when we see that and how amazing that is in and of itself. Amen? So a vine is a climbing or trailing woody stemmed plant or the or of the grape family. So a climbing or trailing woody stemmed plant of the grape family. And we know that Jesus is not a literal vine. And um that's a form of figurative language. So let's look at the definitions again. Again we have abide. We meet and that's a key word, the main word to keep in mind that's repeated over and over in this, these two scriptures. Abide means to stay, continue, to dwell, endure, remain, or not depart. To abide or never move from that place. Amen. We have branch, which is um, in a physical sense, spine, sprout, tender, a limb. Um, we have fruit, that which originates or comes from something, an effect or a result of something. So we bear something as a result of doing something else. And then we have vine again. In the, in the literal sense, it is from the great family. It is a climbing or trailing woody stemmed plant of the great family. Amen. And so on the quest of biblical literacy, 
We also do something here at Hope in Christ. We do something called cross-referencing, and everybody should be doing that because if that one particular scripture is kind of baffling or you're kind of like, mm, what does this really mean, then go look at scriptures that kind of have the same terminology, have the same wording, or the same Greek number, okay, Greek or Hebrew number. And so the two scriptures that I located that use the same um, number in the um, Greek as abide are First John 2 and 6, and it says, He who says he abides in him ought himself to walk just as he walked. Let me say that again, First John 2 and 6, it says, He who su- says he abides in him, who? Jesus, ought himself to walk just as he walked. And so here we see in this particular scripture a little bit more understanding about why we should abide in Christ or how it should look. And so we, he said, abide in me and I in you, and you bear fruit. And so as we walk and we look like him and do exactly what he did, we bear the fruit of righteousness because we know Jesus is righteous and we know that um, he's holy. And so we bear the fruit. We see people see what they saw in Christ in the word, in the scriptures. Um, 1 John 3 and 6 says, whoever abides in him does not sin. So it's, it's giving you specifics. Um, he, whoever, whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen nor known him. Now, when they say him and they capitalize it, they're talking about Christ. They're talking about the Lord, the living one, the true and living God. And so whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen nor nor known him. Because remember, when we are abiding, we go back to that particular scripture. When we are abiding, the word declares that when we abide, we bear fruit. And we don't bear fruit of ourselves or in and of ourselves. We bear the fruit that comes in the relationship of remaining in relationship with Christ. And so Sin is not a part of that um, vine, that Jesus is the vine. And so sin is not a part of that because he, he um, and when he passed, when he died on the cross and he gave it all up, he gave up the ghost, that sin um, and all of that was nailed to the cross. And so the word declares that, that whenever sin, whenever one sin or whoever sinning, they neither know him, seen him, or know him because he, sin, sin is, is not in Christ. Sin is no, has no part in him because it was nailed to the cross. He has dominion. He has authority. He, he, that's how we overcome our sins in him. Amen. And so one of the things I did as I studied these particular words in the scripture, I attempted to draw. Now, those that when you were on um, Facebook and you're a part of my um, Bible journaling group on Facebook, please, please, please join us. Um, I shared with um, them, and I shared because I'm not a person that knows how to draw. You know, journaling, when people hear the word journaling, this is just a sidebar when we're talking about um, one of the strategies we use. Um, when we hear journaling, oftentimes we think about the coloring and the pretty images and all of those things that come with uh, when you're kind of journaling the Bible. And we do the different images, and it's just pretty, all these pretty colors. Well, what God has called me to do in the area of journaling is the other side of the brain. It's the analytical side is where you dig deeper, and you have the questions, and you create the questions, you draw images, you create charts. To help you dig into the word and help you understand the word. Very rarely do we draw. Very rarely do I draw, even as teaching biblical literacy. I don't draw because that's the other side, like the brain, the the artistic ability. That's not me. But um, when I was studying the abiding in um, Christ scripture, I just I, I looked up an image of a vine with branches on it and fruit on it. And I started 
I went back to that particular scripture, and I have an image that I drew. And it's just a little, you know, it looks like a vine. I, I guess it looks like a vine. And it, and it goes, like, comes out, and then the branches are kind of stemming from the vine. And what I noticed, what came to my mind as I was drawing this and I was paying attention to this, I wrote the words remaining in the vine causes the branches to bear a lot of fruit. So I wrote that. But I also wrote, and, and I came to an understanding, that the branches weren't separate of the vine. They weren't just doing their own thing. They didn't just appear. They weren't. They came from the vine. They were a part of the vine. And so um, that stood out to me. And so I want us to catch that revelation and get that understanding that we cannot, as Jesus said in his word, we cannot do anything outside of him. We don't have any power outside of him. We don't have any authority outside of him because the power and authority resides in Christ. Amen. So when we abide in Christ, then we have the power and authority in him. So we want to make sure we understand that. And I also wrote that the branches come out of the vine and they're healthy and they are um, righteous. So it, it reminded me of righteousness as as the branches or as the branch that if I'm stemming from the vine, if I'm a part of the vine, which is Christ, then I am righteous. Why? Because he's righteous. And so the word does go deeper into saying that he prunes um, the parts that, that need to be pruned, but he doesn't destroy, right? And so the pruning takes place in the vine. We, the pruning takes place, but destruction doesn't come. Amen. And so I, it, this, it just gave me such revelation trying to draw this picture. And I just thought it was amazing that it's not beautiful. It's not this beautiful image, but I got a revelation from drawing an image. And then I began as I was journaling through um, after that, I began to try to draw images, even if it was a T-chart or draw something that represent an understanding of that particular scripture. And then the fruit, to me, I began to really look back, and I began to notice that the fruit, to me, represented abundant life and that I was producing, that I was producing good things, not corruption, because I'm abiding in the branch, uh, in, the, um, in the vine. And so, um, but when the, I drew also, down at the bottom of the page, I drew a branch broken off. I drew that. And I noticed that when a branch is broken off or separated from the vine, um, it's no longer attached and also it cannot bear fruit while it's alone by itself. It has to be connected. And so that, that I find that to be just amazing of drawing that image to see that a branch cannot and does not operate by itself. The branch does not operate outside of the vine. It actually is a part of the vine. And so, um, and it's the source, the vine is the source. And so I just wanted to point that out on abiding, 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 remaining, remaining in Christ, remaining in Christ. And so I began to, um, you know, just go a little deeper with the word, and I did the who, what, when, where, why. And those that listen to my other broadcast, um, Biblical Literacy and True Identity, that you know that I use that strategy a lot because it is the basic biblical literacy strategy or just the literacy strategy as a whole, that if you do who, what, when, where, why, and how, you can really dig into understanding something that you're reading. Those that struggle with it, with reading comprehension, it will help you. And so I went back and did that just so that, you know, just a, a deeper look and a better understanding. So I put a who in that particular scripture we had Jesus and we had believers. What Christ makes us aware that he is divine 
greater than the branch and the originator of the branch, the life source of the branch. So this is what I um, read or what I understood when I, wrote, when I read the particular scripture. Then I wrote the fruit is automatic as the branch abides. The fruit comes as the branch remains in the vine, as it's healthy, as the wholeness, because it's the vine of Christ, Christ is all of those things. And so the fruit comes automatically. Amen. Um, and so I put how. Um, the how to the, the scripture is we do this by choice and full obedience and trust, trust, knowing that he is the source of life. So how do we abide? This is the, that was what I was answering. We do this by choice. We have to choose to abide because if we didn't have to choose to abide, why would Christ say abide in me? Why wouldn't he just make us do it? If we didn't have to choose it, why wouldn't he just make us? He gives the instructions. He says, abide in me and I in you. So if he's saying abide in me, he's, at, he's giving you instructions to uh, move in, in action. He, he, he's giving you opportunity to participate in your salvation and your deliverance and your wholeness. And so that's what I wrote. We do it by choice. And we have to fully obey because we can't be, you know, halfway falling off of the vine. You know, we have to obey and stay and remain there. Um, so that's where the obedience comes from. And we have to trust. We have to trust knowing that he's the source of life. If we don't trust Christ and we don't trust God, we won't remain. We won't abide. We won't remain there. And he said never to depart. So we would depart if we don't trust. Amen? And then where? Where are we abiding? In Christ. The word tells us specifically we are abiding in Christ. We do not separate from him. And then the why. So we've answered those questions. Why? We cannot bear fruit, righteousness, abundant life, or those other things by ourselves. Outside, we are detached from the vine. Our existence depends on it. We will have a miserable existence otherwise. Also, everything we need is in Christ. Everything. Everything. Everything we need is found in Christ. A relationship with Christ is very vital. So those are the answers as to why. And so for the month of September, I've been studying, um, and I haven't, I've missed some days, and, and, but the scriptures that I have read have been so amazing. And um, the theme for September is abiding in Christ. And so, of course, I wanted to record the main scripture about Jesus saying, abide in me and I in you. But I wrote, um, I always ask the question when I'm journaling. Um, so one of my questions I asked, and I've been asking it as I've been studying those scriptures throughout September, um, how does this relate to the monthly focus of abiding? Well, of course, this is the main scripture about abiding. It's the one we're very familiar with. So it explains um, to you, when you dig into it, it explains more of why we should be abiding. And I also wrote, we cannot ever be what we were created to be without remaining and obeying the originator of life. He knows what is needed and what will cause us to be fruitful and multiply. And also, he knows what we need and what will cause us to be fruitless or cause us to be fruitless and die spiritually. He knows what it is. And so because he's the source of life, we should be abiding. Why not? If you know that there's a cure to something, if you're sick, if the doctor tells you you're sick, and you know exactly, he tells you exactly where to go and get the cure, then why wouldn't you go get it? Jesus is the cure to spiritual sickness. He's the, he's the cure to our soul, the dying 
spiritually. He is that cure. I have found it. I'm not just saying it just because I want to sound um, all oracle and all of that stuff, and I want to sound preachy. I'm saying it because I have walked this walk, and I have shed so many tears in my life, and, and I've tried to figure it out on my own, and I've tried to find it in people, and I can tell you within my whole being that if I did not abide, and there are some days I think God doesn't love me, and I, some days I know that I didn't, I, I didn't necessarily do what God knew, that what God said was to be done, but I know that if I did not abide in Christ, if I didn't remain, if I didn't continue to go before the throne of grace, if I didn't continue to to just go just as I am to him in my prayer closet, in my time of, of just, just calling out and crying out to him, not in a church, not, not, not necessarily at church. It may not happen at church. But if you go into a closet and you just cry out to him, or if you just get on your knees and cry out to him, he hears you. He hears you. And just surrendering, just saying, God, I've tried it. I've tried to figure it out. It's not working. I, I tried to find it in people. I tried to find it in myself. I've tried to find it in fame and fortune and money and, and, and jobs and careers, and it's not there because only when we abide in Jesus Christ is when we find what we need. Only then will we, as he said, bear fruit. Why? Because he is the only one that can cause us to bear fruit. And I say to you that's listening to me, I know, I know, I know that life makes it appear to be just that easy where we, we say we believe and then we're, we're doing the contrary of the word because the word declares that we just read the scripture. The word declares that whoever abides in him does not sin and whoever Sins, neither knows him or has seen him. And so we know that he can do the miraculous in our lives, but we have to desire to simply surrender. We have to desire to give it to him. I know for a fact, I promise you, if you're listening to this broadcast, I promise you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you try him, you won't have to try anybody else. You won't have to go any further because it's not boring as the world makes it seem. It's not, oh, it, they, they're doing too much. They're holy rollers and all of this stuff. No, it's about the real life. It's about the true life, the, the eternal life. It's about where we're going, not where we are. It's about who is the eternal self-existing one that we're going to stand before, that we're going to enter his rest. It's about that. It's, a not, a, it's not about this life and what people can, you know, what we can get from people, what we can get from things, because the word declares that heaven and earth will pass away. But he said that I will my word will stand. And we know that Jesus, the word of God, declares that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In the beginning, he was with God. All things were made through him. I don't know who needs to hear that, but it is not about stuff. It's not about people, but it's about the word, the word who is manifested in the flesh, in Jesus Christ. He said, abide in me and I in you, and you can then ask for what you will because it is in me that you should desire. It is me that you won't leave you um, disappointed. I won't leave you disappointed. You have to release it and come to me. I'm telling you as a witness myself, myself, I am a living witness that if you just simply release and surrender, that he will do the rest. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank you for listening. Let us pray. 
Father, we bless your name. Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. For you alone are the living one. Father, for those that are listening in the United States, all over the world, God, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, that we would all surrender in this hour, in this day, in this moment, in this second, that we would abide, we would, we would desire to surrender and abide in the vine, and that the branches cannot do anything within ourselves. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that each and every one of us, those that have tried it all, those that have cried out in in the midnight hour, that they would simply lift their hands and surrender, lift their heart and surrender unto you. And that you, I thank you, God, that you said you're not a man that you should lie. And I thank you, O God, in the name of Jesus, that you will make it whole, make them whole and make them new in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for tuning in to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influences Broadcast. I pray for you to find the hope, and the only hope there is, Christ our Lord. Have a wonderful week.